Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, a couple of months ago, before they came out with the Black Swan, the globe killer was a 14,000 foot dome that was found in Antarctica, according to this 1958 article in the Encyclopedia Americana. And the entire flat earth world was abuzz with that. So I had a look at it and I actually pulled up the article from that particular encyclopedia and I found out something interesting. A dome is a geological formation where you have folds in the earth coming together to form basically a, a dome-shaped structure. And there is indeed one located at the coordinates given in the Encyclopedia Americana in Antarctica. It is 12,000 to 14,000 feet high. This is exactly what this article is talking about. But when the flat earthers heard the word dome, they immediately thought of the biblical dome formed on the second day of creation, and that is the crystalline structure that separates the waters above from the waters below. Of course, that had absolutely nothing to do with the dome that was in Antarctica, but it did have the word dome. So, today we're going to have a look at another example of this type of reasoning, and it's going to be the first in my new series, Flat Earthers Say the Darndest Things. So let's cue up the music, and look at the Flat Earth Brothers. Now, once again, the Flat Earth really doesn't have anything new to bring to the table, so they keep rehashing things that have already been debunked in the past. And the Flat Earth Brothers today are no exception. So the first of these old arguments that they're going to bring up are some NASA papers that say airplanes are designed to work on a flat and non-rotating Earth. Who knew? NASA understands that the Earth is flat and stationary. They've been hiding it from us all this time. Their own documents say so. The second one is a declassified CIA document that appears to have been a doctoral thesis from the Soviet Union in 1958. And in this thesis, supposedly they were measuring the distance and properties of the firmament. So let's go ahead and listen to the Flat Earth Brothers start off, and then we'll basically take it from there and see what we can figure out about this. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I know that many of you have seen the documents that were released by NASA decades ago in relation to how they compute things that go on above the surface of the Earth and how it is relative to a flat, non-rotating Earth. And we've also seen the documents from the CIA that were leaked about the firmament and my wheels were sort of turning the other day about all of this because I was trying to think about what this would be like if all of us had been taught that this was true early on and then there was a group of people who thought the earth might be spherical and flying around the sun and how crazy would we think they were until they started finding documents that said the opposite of what this says that said that all of a sudden you know, space uh, travel and missiles are computed relative to a spherical rotating Earth that's flying around the sun at 66,600 miles per hour. If the document said that, that would be something worth looking into if we had always believed what the Earth felt and looked like. But there was documents saying otherwise that were either from our trusted space agencies or whatever the case was. That would get my wheels turning, even if I believed in this to begin with. So I was thinking about that and thought, man, if they were finding some documents about the firmament back, you know, a few years ago, what if we can find some more? And sure enough, there are many more documents about the firmament out there. You know, I'll tell you something. I, this This really just kind of strikes me as funny. First of all, this is a gentleman that believes in the flat earth narrative. I mean, he has bought into it hook, line, and sinker. And he found some documents from NASA and from the Soviet Union that he seems to believe on his superficial review of them that they somehow agree with him. But that's just typical flat earther behavior. They like to read things into documents after just reading a sentence or two of them and then come to the conclusion that it supports their case. But the thing that really strikes me as funny is he has a little academic exercise here. What if children had been taught that the Earth was flat and non-rotating? 
But there was a maverick group that came out and said, look, we're a spinning globe orbiting the sun. And he says that he would look at our evidence with a fair eye and a critical eye to try and see if we had a point. Yet, as a flat earther, he refuses to accept any evidence. He refuses to accept any proof. He claims all pictures of the spherical Earth from space are CGI. So this just kind of strikes me as being disingenuous in the max. You know, as I've said before on one of these videos, my bullshit meter's going off the scale here. But let's go ahead and have a look at this paper and see what it was about. Well, here's the actual document involved. Now, the other day I came up with some rules for flat earth debates. There were five of them. And rule number three is that we live in a Newtonian world. And if you want to bring up Einstein, you have to actually do the math from Einstein and show that your answer will be different than mine using Newtonian physics. And I'm going to limit them to five decimal places. This is just a variation on a theme. The document in question was from August of 1988, and it was a linear model of flight. Basically, they were trying to design a flight simulator. And what they did was they chose to use a flat, non-rotating plane. Now, there were a couple of reasons for that in 1988, and there are reasons that continue to this day. The main reason is that there's a lot of computation involved in trying to come up with a good flight simulator model. And computer power in 1988 was somewhat limited and rather expensive. Now we have much better computers and we can do these calculations easier. But that Newton versus Einstein question comes up. Tell me how an aircraft, at speeds that aircraft fly, is going to be able to tell the difference in flight between a flat and a spherical Earth. Now again, the range involved is relatively short. The aircraft is very, very tiny compared to the Earth, which has a circumference of nearly 25,000 miles. For all intents and purposes, the difference between having that slight curvature in the surface versus a flat surface is going to make no difference whatsoever to an aircraft. So why are we adding complexity to a problem when that complexity is unnecessary and basically doesn't affect our outcome in any way, shape, or form? One of the problems that you run into with physics and engineering is trying to figure out how much of an error is significant. And if you have an error that is several orders of magnitude below the level of significance, and takes three times as much time to compute, why are you doing it? When is good enough, good enough? That this 102 page paper, which I doubt he read or understood, did use a model of a flat non-rotating Earth. The reason that they did it is that adding rotation and curvature to those calculations would not have added any meaningful information. So they chose to eliminate it to reduce the amount of computing time that they had to use and reduce the complexity of the equations. Bringing up the fact that this particular paper used a flat non-rotating Earth for its calculations is a nothing burger. So let's see what else he has to say. So I'm hoping it's just the censorship, even though that sounds like uh, something YouTubers wouldn't say, but I'm, I'm not worried about the censorship. I knew that was gonna happen. I just, my concern is with you guys and everything being okay. By the way, before we get on to the Russian paper, let's have a look at some of these attitudes that he's projecting for us right now and he's how, how he's trying to prepare our mental status to receive his silly little message. You know, he's talking about censorship. He's talking about people being unsubscribed from his channel by YouTube because they want to censor the flat earth. People are unsubscribing from your channel because you're boring and you're putting out silliness and people are getting tired of it. That's why your numbers are going down. That has nothing to do with YouTube. YouTube only stopped recommending conspiratorial websites in their recommended videos. People can still do a search for you. How do you think I found you? So if you want to project this image of a persecuted truthsayer, that's fine, but that's on you. And there are some gullible people out there that may believe it. 
Most of us are not in that group, though. So let's go on to this Russian paper and see what they have to say. But I think this video is getting a little bit long, and we've covered one subject very well. I think that we'll cover that subject on Friday. In the meantime, Flat Earth Brothers, I'm sure you're a little butthurt over this, and I don't blame you. You were burned pretty badly. So if you want to debunk this, I'm going to tell you how to do it. You can do the mathematics and show me that an airplane flying over a rotating spherical Earth behaves differently than an airplane flying over a stationary flat Earth. I will tell you that that's quite a tall order because the airplane doesn't know what the ground's doing underneath it. It's just flying through the air. And as a pilot, there's no way I would be able to tell one way from the other. The only thing I know is that if I push the stick forward, the houses get bigger. If I pull the stick back, the houses get smaller. If I pull the stick way back, the houses get smaller, then they start getting bigger very fast, and they're spinning. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by and visiting with me today. Remember, we have a Patreon and channel memberships. Help a brother out here. In the meantime, I'll see you again on Friday with part two of this episode. Y'all take care, and thank you for stopping by.